Hey guys, welcome back. This is section three, all about Mesopotamia. So the Fertile Crescent, first of all, fertile river valleys were pretty important for supporting many people, big, large populations. The first center of civilization is called Mesopotamia, which translates to the land between the rivers. So Mesopotamia had little rainfall, but had very fertile soil from silt deposits from the Tigris and Euphrates rivers. Flooding was unpredictable, but ancient peoples used irrigation and drainage ditches to control the rivers, and then they were able to do, uh, grow more crops on, a, on, a, on an easily identifiable cycle. So there's a three different areas for Mesopotamian civilizations. We have Assyria, Akkad, and Sumer. So the Sumerians were the first civilization in the area. And by 3000 BCE, the Sumerians had established independent cities in southern Mesopotamia with Eridu, Ur, and Uruk. As they started to grow and expand, they gained political power as, long as, as well as economic power of neighboring countryside, thus spreading and getting more land under their control. From this, they would form city-states, which are the basic units of Sumerian civilization. So all of these city-states were surrounded by walls. Uruk had a six-mile-long wall with defense towers every 30 to 35 feet. So that's a lot of defense towers to keep their city safe. It was also one of the largest city-states with a population of around 50,000 people by 2700 BCE which is a very large city, maybe not by today's standards, but by 4,000 years ago, it's massive. These buildings were made of sun-dried bricks called adobe. Well, will be called adobe, but until then, it's just regular sun-dried bricks. Very little stone or wood was used to build buildings. Religion. So ancient peoples looked to religion to answer questions about life. They would look to gods and goddesses to guide them. And in Mesopotamia, they ha and especially Sumeria, uh, Sumer, they had over 3,000 different gods. This gives them a polytheistic religion, which just simply means that there are many gods that you believe in with your religion. Humans viewed themselves as inferior to the gods and needed to obey them. The most prominent buildings inside of cities were the temples, which were going to be dedicated to their chief god or goddesses in the city. So each city's chief god or goddess was different. They were built on top of the step towers called ziggurats. So you'd have this big step pyramid called a ziggurat, and on top of that would be your temple. Temples and related buildings served as the political, religious, and economic centers, so all the people in high society worked and lived in that area of the city. Temples were used to store food surpluses as well as extra crafts that would be used to trade. Priests and priestesses held a lot of power. They were among the highest in society, which gives them a a theocracy, which is a government established by divine authority or run by the religious, uh, re the people who run the religion. All rulers believe to have powers from God, so God gave these people powers, and that's why they're able to rule over their cities. Kings would lead their armies, they'd supervise the public works, and they organized um, work for irrigation projects. Armies, government, and priests would all aid the king. Moving to society, uh, society and economics, they had traditional economies that was based mostly on farming, a little bit of trade, and a very small amount of industry to make and build stuff that they would either use or trade. They were very skilled with wool and textiles made from wool, so different cloth materials. They were good with pottery and also good with metalwork. Copper, gold, and silver were going to be used for jewelry and tools. They also discovered how to make bronze, which if we remember from before, it means you combine tin and copper. 
They would barter wool, barley, dried fish, wheat, metal goods for imported copper, tin, and timber. So they would trade different food and some other goods for different metals. They started trading to the Mediterranean Sea in the west and to India in the east. Um, the invention of the wheel came about in 3000 BCE and made trade way easier. It's way easier to, to move stuff from place to place now. There were three major social groups in Mesopotamia. The first was the nobles, which consisted of royal and priestly officials. Below them, you had the commoners. They were the people working for the palace. They worked for the temple. They farmed. They were merchants, so they sold different things. They fished, and they were craftspeople that made things. 90-ish percent of the commoners were actually just farmers, so only 10% were doing the other things. At the bottom, you have the slaves, and they belonged to the palace officials and were used to build buildings around the cities and around the area. Creativity of the Sumerians. So they invented many different things that affected the present day. Some of these are writing systems. So in 3000 BCE, they were the first to create a writing system, which they called cuneiform, which was a wedge-shaped written language. They would make wedge-shaped impressions in clay tablets, and then they would bake the clay to harden them. This uh, writing system was mainly just used for record keeping. And anyone who was taught to write were among the most important in Sumerian society. So only the, the upper class people would be taught how to write. So it's important because it allowed them to keep records and knowledge. There were new ways to communicate ideas. One of the first literatures was a poem called the Epic of Gilgamesh. Technology. So one of the most important things they invented was the wagon wheel. They also invented the sundial, which was used to keep time as a as kind of like a clock, which kind of looks like this. They helped invent bronze. They devised a number system based on the number 60, so the first actual number system. They started using geometry to measure fields and to build buildings. And they charted the constellations, so they were mapping the stars, which this is what some of their constellation charts look like. And that's going to do it for this one. Thanks, guys.